you call again. I'm here with my co-host, the daughter of Lilith. You know when we collaborate, we bring you some epic episodes. Let's go. to a brand new I was about to say bonus episode but it's going to be too long so I decided to make it an episode of Beauty Unlocked I am here with my co-host the daughter of Lily yay as always I'm so happy it's been far too long far far too long since my January God, I think life, life happened this last month it's a lot so much to talk about in the dating but, world and experience. Oh my goodness, I cannot fucking wait. So what are we gonna talk about? Give it to us. We had this wonderful idea, and this was a while ago. This was not even like conjured up because of certain things or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, we were starting to talk about like the toxic sort of environment around the dating app world and yep. the kind of people you meet sometimes. Um, <laughs> So I am I'm here to bring my research (laughs) to the forefront, but I've also been super shocked at how many people were so enthusiastic to share their own stories. Um, To the point where I was like, I think we may have dated the same people. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, damn, damn. Wow, okay. Probably familiar. And then we actually, you know, corroborated names and whatnot and not they, they were not the same people. Okay. Um uh, thank God. That's, but, yeah. yeah, I was about to say, like, thank God. That's a big few. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's so what talking about. Okay, I can't wait to hear everybody's experiences and your own, and I'll throw in my <laughs> own. Although it's been quite a long time, so But still, experiences, they count, right? Um, But before we begin with all the juicy, juicy, the meat of this episode, I did some research and I wanted to know how many dating apps there were out there. And I found this list of some that I've heard of and others I was like, what's what's this all about? Never heard of this one. Um, so this yeah. list comes from globenewswire.com, but I'll be obviously posting the link so you guys can actually check out the full list. Um, so, and I love how they did it. Like they said what each of these dating apps is best for like, you know, users like. So we're going to look at one of them that's called eHarmony. Have you heard of that one? Yep. <laughs> Apparently it's best for serious relationships. I don't know. And you have to pay a fuck ton of money for it. Oh, um, do you? Okay, so you have to pay for it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think so. I remember it. So that's eHarmony for serious relationships. Another one is Elite Singles, which is for working yeah. professionals. <laughs> <laughs> so, mind okay. you, the daughter of Lilith, you're in the States. I'm just going to say that I'm in Cyprus, and some of some of these apps are not... They don't use them in Cyprus. I mean, we don't use them in Cyprus, so... But, okay, it's good that you've heard about a lot of these. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Another one is Adult Friend Finder. And that's best for hookups. It's Adult Friend Finder. (laughs) Adult Friend Finder. And it's best for hookups. And then it got me thinking, isn't that what most most dating apps are, kind of? I feel like many people, but we're going to get into it. But this one is best yeah. for hookups. The next one, Silver Singles, is for those uh, over 50 years old. <laughs> then you have Bumble. You have Hinge. Have you heard of Hinge? Yes, I loved Hinge. Okay, that is where so... all the very, very beautiful people are and also okay. intellectual. Okay, so <laughs> what 
caught my attention with this one. Um, this app was launched, uh, this dating app was launched back in 2016. And they're saying that it's the most talked about dating app due to its users' success rates. So 75% mm-hmm. of users said that they went on a second date. And what mm-hmm. Hinge does, basically, to those who don't know, is that you can leave a review. I didn't know this. You can leave a review which then hinges software, then helps users refine their match algorithm. And we talked about algorithms in our discussion, yeah. you know, and we're going to talk about like in this episode. So that was interesting. You're going to love paper. that. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's available. <laughs> okay, first of all, Cyprus is so damn small that I'm sure the people that are on Hinge are going to be on all the other dating apps here. So I'm just like... No, I meant the, the, the whole like statistics and algorithm. That's oh, yeah. Like shit. That's like I, I get off on statistics. Yeah. Your, that's that's your my thing. I definitely. When I want to turn on Carissa, I just whisper with sweet nothings into her ear with numbers. And oh oh my yeah. goodness! And I go wild. <laughs> let me tell you, another one that I'm 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 actually interested in, very much so, is seeking. Have you heard that one? No. No. Well, it's for sugar daddies and sugar babies. Okay. Wait. What is this? Seeking. Seeking. Done. Also, do I qualify as a sugar baby if I'm 37 years old, independent, and getting my graduate degree? Um, <laughs> I don't know the age range because I would say that we're definitely in that age range of actually being sugar mamas or zaddies and stuff. So I'm not too sure. But, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you never know. Try, I mean, listen, if it's a, I don't, I wouldn't try this in Cyprus because I can only imagine and I know who's going to be on that pool in Seeking.com. Oh, yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, no, oh. hard pass. But another one is J-Date. And this one is for Jewish, Jewish singles only. J-Date. Yes, they're very, <laughs> Jewish singles so we're only. Jewish, can we use it? Or like how much Jewish, do you have to be? Uh, I don't. I didn't go onto the site. I should check like their your user policy of like, is it like uh, based on a percentage, which would get me off because, as we said before, statistics and percentages That's get me what off. I'm saying, girl. Or is it like, I don't know. So is it just full Jew? I'm not too sure. But then we have, and I've heard of this one from years ago, called Christian Mingle. So you can guess by its name, Christian Mingle, that it's for Christians. <clears throat> uh, yeah, pretty much. Another one that... I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, um, there's another one that caught my attention because, again, they get fancy with their wording, but uh, Zusk. Have you heard of that one? No? No. Okay, so this one is very interesting because it's uh, it boasts an international community. It has over 40, uh, 40 million members worldwide. It boasts okay. that they, there are 3 million messages sent per day through this Zusk app, this dating app, uh, in 25 different languages in over 80 countries. So a community oh, of wow. 40 million members worldwide. What is interesting is that, and this is what they said, is this website employs something called behavioral matchmaking technology. And I'm just like, oh, you're all fancy. You're just using an algorithm again, but you're fancy. You spruced it up by say, by calling it a behavioral matchmaking tech, behavioral matchmaking technology. So basically yeah. it helps. In other words, I'll Exactly. It helps find singles compatible individuals that might equate to a match made in heaven. Ooh. So that's Zeusk. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would have to check it out. You know, just to pause there for a second. Here's something that I did find. And it's the I'm glad that you bring up the language use. Right. Because we always mm-hmm. go into these these really deep nooks and crannies of what language actually does for the psyche of a human being. Mm -hmm. It really bothers me when they say that, you know, words like satisfaction guaranteed or, Mm -hmm. you know, match made in heaven, all of this sort of propaganda that, and I'm not gonna lie, I have seen a lot of people, men and women, stick Mm -hmm. it out because, well, the app matched me. So surely there must be something in common with this person. And- Okay. 
that that's the beginning of the toxicity of, of and again, I don't want to use that word lightly because mm-hmm, everybody's mm-hmm. now throwing the word toxic. But it is a breeding ground for toxic people. Like, yes. do you know what I mean? Like there's this like, element of, well, fuck, is this as good as it's going to get? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I should stick it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting point, and we're going to discuss it definitely a bit further and in more detail. Um, yeah. Another one. You know it. OK, Cupid. It's been around for a oh my long God, time. Yeah. OK, Cupid. Another yeah. one that yeah. um, was in the headlines a few years ago is Ashley Madison. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ashley Madison um, is for is a married dating site, married couples. Yep. <laughs> basically and there was a scandal a few years ago because their system was hacked and a whole bunch of names were leaked uh some prominent people were on ashleymadison.com and it just got leaked all over the place that they were on ashley madison and fun fact that ashley madison actually has uh offices here in limassol about 50 kilometers from where i live and i'm like wait when i saw that i was like is it oh. ashley madison the ashley madison like the that that whole website thing i was like Aha, uh-huh. interesting. So, is a real person? Does Ashley Madison exist? I don't know. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she was. I don't know. I have no clue. Hmm. I don't know. I shall find out. It would out. be interesting. It would be interesting <laughs> to find out. Another one that I think everyone's heard of is Tinder. <clears throat> and Tinder is pretty much it's used. Boys don't mind. Fuck girl. I mean, it's worldwide. <laughs> It's worldwide, that's for sure. Um, We're going to get into Tinder a bit later also. And then I decided to also add in, because I found that this list that they had didn't include the LGBTQIA plus like dating apps. And there are quite a few. And I'm going to add two of them. Um, One is Grindr. And Grindr has been around for quite some time, actually. Um, It's and it's uh, yeah. So Grindr has been around for at least 10 years, at least maybe more. Um, and it's mostly for, for gay men, but another one, and I'm on this one and it's on her. Have you heard of her? That sounds weird. Have you heard of her? No, I haven't. Okay. So this one, (laughs) this, (laughs) you haven't heard of her, her, her. So this one is geared towards lesbian, queer, bisexual, non-binary people, trans women. And a good thing is that, but we're getting to it a bit later, that cisgendered men are not allowed. Oh, cisgendered men are not allowed like on this. Yeah, so it's completely different from like all the other apps. Yeah, and it also provides um, LGBTQIA plus events and news, so you can stay up to date. Um, and this one I've been using for, I think, like a week so far. And it's it's very different. Listen. The whole swiping left, swipe, swiping right thing is still used on the majority of these apps. So it's no different on her. Mm. But it is different because it's just geared and there's no cisgendered men allowed to use the app. Now, of course, it's not to say that cisgendered men cannot make fake profiles and all that. Which well, what is, say, is a possibility. They do. Yes, they do. Um, they do. I think <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to say something controversial. And you know that I love my controversy. I think that it's fucking great that they're not allowed in. I agree. They're allowed everywhere else. Exactly. Why the fuck? I mean, experience what it feels like to be a marginalized voice for a second. And you're not welcomed here. We don't want you. I'm sorry. The majority of dating apps anyway are geared more towards, you know. Yeah, for them. So that is. That's my my pet peeve of, of the dating mm-hmm. apps because I, let me tell you I met some really great people like don't mm-hmm. get me wrong and in fact some of them I'm hoping that will be really long term friends because they yeah. are genuinely good guys yeah there was just no chemistry mm-hmm. listen there were some that I was just like what the fuck is wrong with this person. Mm, mm, like mm. I touched lampshade to make sure that they were not made out of human remains. I was like, there has to be a catch here. Damn, damn. Is that Vimba? No, no, no. Yeah, it was Vimba. Vimba being all <laughs> naughty. Ah, uh, because I, I heard like some scratching and trying to get through, and I'm just like, is that Vimba? 
Like, uh, no. <laughs> All right. The man that I met. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to break down the door and I'll be like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> well, this I'm episode was really short. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> All right, so are you ready? So those are the um, those are some of the apps. Now, to tell you the truth, I didn't research how many apps are actually out there, the number, because again, I get off on that right. stuff. But I didn't actually research that. I researched, you know, the most the most used, let's say, um, yeah. out there, and these happen to be the ones. Um, they did mention a few. Like I said, I'm going to link the what you call it, the article, into the show notes, so everyone can actually take a look at the whole list. Um, But these are the ones that are used the most. So dating and using dating apps during COVID. Now, yes, there's been a rise. That's for sure. Um, We're stuck at home. What to do, right? Um, But they've been around for a long time. And Mm. I've been using them on and off um, because I find that, like you said, there's just uh, not to throw it around lightly, but there are a lot of toxic people um on these dating apps um so off and on over the years because at a certain point you're just fucking tired (laughs) you're just fucking tired of the same bullshit yep yep um so i recently moved back to the states right and Mm -hmm. i wasn't even contemplating dating at all Mm -hmm. um and i have a very I know that it's going to probably upset quite a few people and I want your opinion on it Um, because for the first time ever, when I asked some people to get Mm -hmm. tested before obviously engaging in any sexual activity, um, I thought it was common practice. Like I come from a background of dating men who willfully did it on their own and they were just like, look, if this is going to take the next step, I would really like to know that we're both healthy and safe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I found that so sexy too. I was like, cause you know, I like things clean. I like things aesthetic. <laughs> like, I mean, know, obvi- yes, yes. You know, know that my vagina is not going to catch anything. Cause I like her and I, and I, and I love her. Um, it was the first time that I actually was met with resistance for it. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was the, well, you know, I can wear condoms and whatever. And I'm just like, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Like, Mm -hmm. if you are giving me the impression that I'm not the only person that you're sleeping with, which is the impression that these people gave me, Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was true or not. Yeah. Um, I need to know. (laughs) I have a right to know. Of course. Because if this going to be and this is where it gets really murky and this is where the dating app fails it links you with people and i think that a lot of and i'm gonna say it cisgender men are looking for hookups and i think Mm -hmm. that you need to be very fucking clear that you're looking for hookups like that is acceptable i am not looking for hookups i'm not looking for random shit i'm not looking for you know thanks for the ride it was great Saying that, just to interrupt you really quickly, I actually remember writing years ago on my Tinder profile, no hookups. And I remember this person that we matched. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, what are you on Tinder for if it's not for hookups? Yep. And I think that those are the people that filter into Bumble. And the thing is, is like, so Bumble gives you the option of putting relationship don't know what I'm looking for yet, French, mm-hmm. whatever, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I remember that on my mind, because I got rid of my profile, and then I went back on it, mm-hmm. met some really good people, and then I'm off them right now, because I'm just like, mm-hmm. fuck this, I don't really need this shit. But I remember that some of them were looking for relationships. But apparently, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's like a cultural difference, you mm-hmm. might want to step in and, and tell me how it is. Um, if I'm looking for a relationship, I'm not going to be dating 10 people at the same time, or I'm going to be talking to 10 people at the same time, hoping that one of them lands. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, it kind of, it, it kind of, it's like speed dating. It sounds, you know, like if you're, yeah. if you know what I mean? Like that, yeah. like you have this certain amount of time to talk to someone and then on to the next one. And this is more of a virtual thing. Do you know what I mean? And that's the thing. Cause I was talking to 
so at the same time I was I was seeing one person and then mm-hmm. somebody came along and I was like, well, this person's kind of flaky. Like I'm I'm not sure what this person wants. So mm-hmm. I'm, fuck it, I'm gonna talk to this person. Yeah. And then, you know, this other person started gaining a lot of momentum because they knew what they were saying. They knew how to court me. They knew how to, you know what I mean? Like they were taking mm-hmm. their time, but at the same time they were listening and they were, they were very serious about what they were looking for. And the other one was yeah. just, you know, it's not okay when you are out with them and they're checking their phone to see if, you know, they've got other Bumble messages. Like it's just, and they think that you don't notice. Do you know what I mean? It's just one yes. of those things where you're like, dude, my phone's on mute so that you don't think that I am doing this because it's rude. And this dating yeah. experience is so bizarre because I feel that they lie or they pretend that they're looking for something and then you end up going out on a date and you're yes. just like, you're not looking for anything that you said that you were looking for. Yes. Also, yes. Why are you using pictures of like 30 years ago. I'm not understanding. <laughs> That's a vanity thing right there, though, isn't it? That's just plain old vanity. <laughs> like... <laughs> You're not bad looking. You're a good looking yeah. dude. You don't need a picture of when you were like 20. Like, yeah. Oh, like, just embrace who you are. I don't that's know. The thi- it was just- See, that's important, though. What you're saying right there is embrace who you are. First of all, the second one yeah. is I think a lot of people. OK. I think there's a lot of people out there who um, don't want to be honest with themselves or with their intentions. Mm. So they rather just say, I'm looking for a relationship because the majority... You're dropping truth. I'm just there saying like, listen... And again, it's not to generalize this of like cisgendered men and cisgendered women and this and that, that, but a lot of people, uh, women in particular, or those that identify as women, we want that, right? We want Mm -hmm. that connection. Mm -hmm. We want that forever person. I'm putting that in air quotes, forever person. But you know what I mean? We're looking for that stable relationship. And it's not to say all women, like I said, I don't want to generalize and whatnot. But um, so for, for many of these cisgendered men, let's say, it's easier to pretend to say, well, you know what? I'm looking for a relationship as well. Mm. When you're, okay, you're not being honest. Um, you damn well know what game you're playing right there. And it, again, it's not to say that all of them are the same. It's not to say that. Because I feel like people are going to be like, well, not all. Okay, yeah, you're missing the point here. <laughs> like, you know, no, before I like. You, I completely agree with you. I think that that the, the issue that I have with dating apps mm-hmm. is that nobody is genuine do you know what i mean like i don't i don't want again i mean i don't want to generalize but the people that i was talking to i made sure to tailor it down first of all i don't understand why every other dude needs to have a picture of them hunting or of them fishing like i don't get it i can go buy fish at the supermarket thank you very much you are not a provider like but that's the toxicity isn't that though the toxicity when we think of how we are we think that women are the Listen, we are healers and stuff like that. We're going to get into it also. But in the sense of and yeah. what what many people think that is attractive is, oh, this hunter gatherer. I can go and hunt. I can provide. I can. No. So, you know, it, and, and again. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no. And so basically it's just one of those things. So they actually think, well, this is what, you know, interests you know, women, is that they can see that I do all these things that I can fucking provide because I am the man and, you know, and I'm meant to do these things. And hunting pictures, I feel like it's funny. And it's kind of like, so you're hunting, but you're not to say that sounds like so bad what I'm about to say, but you're also hunting for your next lay on these dating apps. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what that, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't want to make it like, oh, this is where like serial killers are, whatever. But I'm saying that, well, yes, there have been issues. I mean, there was the serial killer in Cyprus. That's what he did, you know? But in the sense of this is what it is, it's like, okay, so you're hunting animals. We are of the animal species, let's be honest. And I feel like you're on these dating apps showing your manliness, your manliness. 
Um, and you're going on the hunt. You're going on the hunt, basically. I completely agree with that. And But there's a couple of things that bother me because it's fishing. It's also linked with status. Do you know yes. what I mean? Look at my yacht. Yeah. Look at my boat. Look at my money. Look at... You cannot of be... This is... Let me summarize my experience of the month that I was on these dating apps. <laughs> uh, the men, two men that I ended up meeting up, mm-hmm. one of them was definitely not the height that they said they were. And I think that when they took a good look at me, they were like, holy fucking shit. Like she could take me down if, if she wanted to. Yeah. We've talked about this, Carissa. We're not, yeah, we're not for real. Like, come at and you're gonna get your eyes clawed. Do you know what I exactly, mean? Exactly, like, exactly. And I also want, it's this idea, I think the, the perception that I got, cause I didn't, I wasn't able to have a conversation with these men. Like I wasn't able to really go in depth to what they were doing or what they were, like why they were the way they were. Like one of them, I, I, I did confront about a couple of things and I was just like, you, you don't do this ever again. Like. I'm not in the role of being a mother raising a child, but you need to fucking know that, you know, certain things that you do, they're not okay. Um, Which brings me to the next point, Mm -hmm. the women. Mm -hmm. What kind of bullshit are we putting out there that makes Mm -hmm. these motherfuckers think that it's okay to address us the way that they do? Because let me tell you something, receiving unsolicited dick pics Mm -hmm. doesn't turn Uh out. I'm going to say that I it's not only unsolicited dick pics that I have received. I have received unsolicited women. And I'm just like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. What's yeah. happening? What what just happened? This mm-hmm. went from 0 to 1000 real fucking quick. Yeah. What happened? Did I what happened? That's my thing cuz I bodies human bodies don't offend me. No, they don't. They, I don't. They don't. They don't me either. Me um, but I didn't ask to see it. Do you know what exactly? I mean? Like I didn't. I. I but this I goes into liked- what we've talked about, right? Consent. This is but, part of consent, isn't it? Yes, but apparently, so this is where I want to bring some of the people who, because it was actually one of one of them was, well, no, there were four that were dudes explaining why they have sent dick pics and re- regretted it one of them was like i did it i was young and i was dumb and sorry about that um, yeah. <coughs> excuse me and then the women who have received them so one mm-hmm. of them my dear dear friend and she she's gonna know who she is she collects them and she actually makes a collage and she puts their name on it as well so whenever you know she hears of her friends going out on a date or whatever she's like well remember if you go with this guy, it's going to look like this and you're going to be mm. getting it too. Um, she's just vicious like that. <laughs> I, I don't go to that extent, but I think that if you send those type of photos unsolicited, you fucking deserve to be dragged. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're lucky a woman hasn't done that to you. You're, mm. You should be grateful that none of us really honestly have that vindictive streak to be like, yeah. blast you. I'm but- going to fuck you up. Uh, then again, of course, like a dick pic, it's not like, you know, you can you can send it. N- m- this is weird. Not that you can send it in the sense of it's been sent to you. You haven't you haven't asked yeah. for it. It's been sent to you. Um, if it's just the dick and you're saying, OK, this person sent me a dick. That other person can be like, no, I didn't. That's not my well, dick. The things like men sometimes don't think about it thoroughly some women don't either and then there's other pieces that you can put as evidence and being like this is who they are of course and this is the thing like i i had a one of them honestly because i've only received like three dick pics in my life three good looking penis like listen it's um yeah good looking they're great uh, and I recently got one and I was just like, that's a, that's a good looking penis. Great. That's Why did where you I went it? wrong with my ex-husband. I also said the same thing. That's a good looking penis. And it <laughs> fucked me over in more ways than one. <laughs> Remember this kids. <laughs> Don't get married. 
off of um, based off of someone's genitalia. <laughs> like, yeah, but that was young, naive you know. me. But that's something else. That's that's something else. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. And I and I was you know was appreciative that we were able to have a conversation about that because consent came up. I was like, it was mm-hmm. unsolicited. I didn't want mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying to get to know you. I'm trying to exactly. Like, I know that you say that you're looking for a relationship on your Bumble account, but I know for a fact that you're looking for hookups. Like, exactly. so now, and this is the thing, because this is where the mind games come in, right? Hmm. And I'm going to own up to it. Don't fucking play mind games with me. You're going to lose and you're going to lose horribly. I am toxic in that way. Like once you rub me the wrong way, uh, listen. I only hope to rub you the right way. Always. Uh, people are going to be like, what the fuck is happening? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> no, but I feel like this is it's just. This book, Carissa. <laughs> I just feel like it's just. Who the fuck is the first one to send? Who started it's this whole point. thing of. First of all, it's just like, like you said, you're trying to get to know the person. Yeah. Everything else is lie. irrelevant. That's the thing. And honestly, I'm not gonna have a conversation with your dick twenty four seven. I'm not. No. And the, the the thing that really bothered me about this is that I was genuinely interested in the person. Do you know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. genuinely. And I had just finished seeing them. Like yeah. it was right after quote unquote a date. Yeah. And yeah. You know, it it kind of put me off. I was like, honestly, like a little bit of mystery is great. You know what I mean? Like, you want me to see your penis? I would really like to see it in person. Um, court me, like, do things that encourage me and turn me on. And the thing is, is like, part of this dating culture is like you said so well at the beginning is pretending to be something that we're not and i also find that people don't know who they are and they, they don't yes. have, they don't have like pulse it like they don't have people that take the pulse of situations and tell them i don't think that you should do that dude like i don't think that this person has ever had someone sit down with him and be like have you checked yourself lately like i don't think that you should be saying shit like that or doing shit like that and and it it makes me sad in the sense because there are there there are people out there with great potential yeah but then they end up doing shit like this that you're like actually now i'm not interested you know what i mean it was just kind of like the thing is I- that to do and we've talked we we we've, we've talked about this to get to know who you truly are, you have to sit with the darkest parts of yourself. Yeah. A lot of people do not that. want yeah. to sit in front of that fucking mirror and do that kind of work because it's, it's number one, it's too difficult. Yeah. Number two, <laughs> you just don't want to believe that you can be this toxic person. And it's, in reality, it's only in the past, I don't know, like five, six years, I would say, that I've actually understood toxic and what it meant. Mm -hmm. And to say that, you know, I've always been right and, you know, this upstanding, okay, well, whatever, you know, this this person, (laughs) it's not. I was a little shit. Um, and I had in my previous relationships, I looked into those previous relationships and I saw the toxicity I was bringing into those relationships as well to say that it's only the fault of one person. Absolutely not. I don't believe that it takes two to tango, honey. And the way I see it is that you are at fault for things too. Now that's not to say I'm not there like to victim blame. We're not talking about that. We're not talking Mm -hmm. about any of that. We're not talking about abusive situations and stuff like that. Um, We're talking about you also have toxic traits. You cannot just push it off to one person and say, no, it's all them. It's him, it's her, it's them. No, it's also you and you need to realize that. But a lot of people don't want to sit in front of the mirror because it's it's an... uh, it's not an ugly truth, yeah. but it's um, it's 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 um, 
it's just uh, difficult to accept that within ourselves. We don't want to believe That's that of ourselves. A good way of putting it. I'm going to write on high with it, no pun intended, on this dick pic. <laughs> because it really <laughs> it detonated all these triggers that I already had, right? Because it's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. marriage, all these things. Um, you know, at that point, I hadn't had any other sexual partners other than my husband, you know, for the period that I was with my husband, like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. six fucking years. So it's a long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and genuinely like, can I blame this person for everything? Of course not. Like, no, there were some things that they did that I was like, that's fucking that. Nope. I'm out. Which I did at the end. I was like, Nope, it's been a pleasure. See ya. I'm out. No. Um, it's interesting to sit with those aspects of ourselves and really mm-hmm. look in deep. Mine is trust. Do you know what I mean? And when I got mm-hmm. that big pick, I felt like my boundaries had been completely and utterly disregarded. And I was like, yeah. And instead of getting angry, like old me would have gotten, oh my God, old me would have, oh, I don't even want to imagine what I would have done. Anyway, I was just like, I am going to have a conversation with this person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's fine, but it leaves you with that residue of: Can you really trust this person? Can you really trust yourself in setting your boundaries clearly? And the mm-hmm. thing is, is that when you're dating, dating is a dangerous game when it comes to defining things because mm-hmm. it's. Murky. And when my biggest red flag was when they, I thought I was doing the right thing in trying to approach them and letting them know that there was potentially someone else that was gaining a lot of momentum Mm -hmm. and I needed to, cause he honestly, this person really knocked my knees. Right. Like I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, he's, he's super smart. He's witty. He's like all these things. Right. So I wanted to just kind of sort of give the heads up and I, Mm -hmm. And he refused to give an answer. He was just like, I'm just having a great time. And I'm like, all right. Whereas this other one is saying, you know what? I'm going to get, I I feel like we're starting to progress into more serious kind of grounds. Like we're talking a lot more, like we're spending, we're spending a lot more time together. Um, I want you to feel comfortable. Like, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, fuck that. This is murky. Like, holy shit. What's your take on that? What are the rules of dating? What do you do? I thought I was doing the right thing and kind of sort of signaling that there was potentially someone else coming along, like kind of saying, listen, I'm having a great time with you. Could we just not have, not be exclusive, obviously, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, can mm-hmm. we- Listen, I think stories? honesty, it's like they say honesty is the best policy and there's nothing wrong. With being yeah. totally honest, I don't see, listen, uh, I don't see dating. It's all about, um, like you said, you know, it's about establishing certain boundaries, but it's also open to communication. It doesn't matter what part of dating, what what stage of dating you're at. You know what I mean? I think that honesty is yeah. the best policy. I think that, you know, it, being truthful and saying, well, you know what? You're not the only person. There's someone else. Yeah. It's not like it's a competition because we're still getting, we're still in that stage of getting to know each other. And I'm right. sure that I'm not the only one either because there wasn't this established, this talk where it's like, you know what? This is what we're doing. We are exclusive. Until that talk comes along, I don't see. Yeah. I just think that everybody just needs honesty. Just to be honest. Just to be honest, now there's yeah. also the thing of listen. There's some people that would take it the wrong way, mm. you know, and saying you're, you know, for them, it would be like uh, I can I can see as many women as I want, but if you're with yeah. me, that's not okay that you see as many men as you want. And this is where you know, I mean, it's a weird double standard. And then it was it was just odd because what I was looking for was the idea of prioritizing each other, not exclusive. Like, mm-hmm. listen, I got out of the 
marriage. Like, honestly, it's going to take me a little bit of time for me to be like, you're the one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's what people expect, it, isn't it, on dating apps? Is it? Yeah. I mean, in the thing of that's the notion of this is the one. And there's tons of TV shows <laughs> like that, too, where yeah. it's ingrained into our mind. You're going on yeah. this one day, two date, whatever. Eventually, if you, let's say, go on the fifth date, you should have already made the decision. I feel like it puts pressure on people. It puts pressure on us to say, why don't I like this person? We've been on so many dates. We vibe well. Why is this person, why do I feel like it's not the one? And that's do you know what, what I mean? That, yeah, and that's where COVID really kind of changed the game for me because I am, listen, you know half of my dating history. And I have been, for the most part, super fucking spoiled. I have to admit, I have been loved right. Do you know what I mean? Sure, there were a couple of bad experiences there. Um, and like you said, I, I own up to a lot of it as well. But for the most part, Jesus fucking Christ, I've been really lucky. Do you know what I mean? And it's yeah, never yeah. been a lack of options and it's never been anything like that. It's just luck sometimes yeah. that you find the right people who love you yeah, right. Yeah. But I also, and I don't know if you'll agree with this, it's the experience of, I know who I am. I, it has taken me a fucking long time to get here to be like, that's not okay. That shit's not okay. That is amazing. Keep doing that shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, like yeah, yeah, I'm driving with this. Like if you have a fucking bookshelf full of books and you can talk to me about literature, but at the same time, talk to me about politics, but at the same time, talking about philosophy, that is like the floods of the Amazon. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just really sexy. Yeah. But I just, feel, and that is the conversation. And I think that that is what I really was stimulated by. I didn't need to see the person all the time. I did like mm -hmm. the people, um, the conversations were great. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, this immediacy of wanting to be physical and it's like hold up a fucking minute can, can we, we hold take hands? it a moment please can to we, breathe can we make out like can we just embrace in other ways like I, I don't have to sleep with you just yet like it freaks me out that intensity of just like this is all it almost made me feel like all they had to offer was sex and i was like surely there must be more to you than this like, and if you but I think this up, is I think this is what this is what uh, dating apps have created though. It's perpetuated mm. hookup culture either way. In, in all honesty, I this is gonna this is gonna sound so freaking weird, right? So like you said, you know who you are, and and it's taken years to get to this place, you know, of knowing who you are, embracing yourself, you know, and everything about you. Same for me. Um, I mm. was on a live, I think this Saturday and Poor somebody God, asked, God, really <laughs> yeah, towards the end when I was going to sleep, cause I was like, I'm tired, oh, <laughs> like, no. but somebody asked me and I have no problem if people ask me, well, it depends like who, because you can feel a, you can feel a vibe from certain, but yes. anyway, this yeah. person asked me. And it wasn't in a way of like, well, then I'm going to take you out to dinner kind of thing. Like, it's not, it wasn't like that. It was just, so yeah. what about your love life? This person asks me. And I'm just like, what about my love life in the times of COVID-19 when we're uh, uh, constantly on lockdown here in Cyprus? Like, what are you expecting? And then I said, do you know what? I'm going to tell you exactly. I am a, I, I am a difficult person. Um, but I'm a difficult person because number one, I'm very much in my Virgo ways. Um, so many ways. Um, and I can see them like when they come out where I'm just like, what? that's, that's Virgo. I feel like I'm just, you know, but anyway, um, and I said for the moment in my life, if somebody comes into my life, they have to be fucking wow. And I'm not talking about looks wise. I am yeah. talking about yeah. you being able to capture yeah and maintain my attention because in my mind, I woo, like I, number one, I'm someone, and this has taken a long time, but I say it openly now, I get bored very easily. So you better be fucking more engaging than just sex because that's just not gonna cut it. After a while, enough is enough. I mean, not that sex is never, you know what I mean? But in the sense of that's not gonna hold 
a relationship together, number one. Number two, my priorities are if anybody walks into my life, they have to understand that my work and what I do comes before everything else. And sometimes it comes even before me. And you have to understand that you might take second place in my life for a certain amount of time. It's not to say in the beginning, yeah, I'm okay with that. And afterwards getting all huffy and puffy. I told you exactly. Like I outlined things, this, this, and this. There's no leeway. There's no in between. Should I be more, um, uh, how would you say, uh, lenient? I don't know. Like, should I not be so strict? No, because I wasn't so strict in the past that I know that it's fucked me over. My priorities are this, and I have put other people number one in my life, you know, uh, ex-partners, ex-husbands and everything. Ex-husband, not that I had more than one, just husband. Um, like, I've put them as my priority, and I saw how it destroyed me. I didn't put myself in priority. I didn't put my dreams. I didn't put my wishes in the forefront of that. Not forefront of that relationship, but that person was everything to me. And it utterly destroyed yeah. me utterly destroyed me and so and that's because I wasn't verbal in my wants and my needs because I didn't feel like I was worthy enough do you see what I mean it was like yeah no this yeah. person is where my attention is going to I'm not worthy to have attention I have to give all my attention and all my time to this person in my last relationship five years ago it's to the point of where I used to the person was more than capable of doing this but this is how you know giving I was all right, my love buckets, I decided to break this episode down into two parts because it turned out that this episode was nearly two hours long. So tune in next week to find out more about our personal dating history and our final thoughts regarding dating apps. As always, the daughter of Lilith and I enjoy collaborating and bringing you another epic episode. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and remember to tune in next week for part two. As always, remember to love each other, love yourselves, spread some of that sweet, sweet love and stay safe. Bye. You know, know that my vagina is not going to catch anything because I like her and I, and, I, and I love her. That's where I went wrong with my ex-husband. I also said the same thing. That's a good looking penis. <laughs> Done. Also, do I qualify as a sugar baby if I'm 37 years old, independent, and getting my graduate degree? Oh, yeah. I, I get off on statistics. When I want to turn on Carissa, I just whisper sweet nothings into her ear with numbers, and it doesn't work. <laughs>